Good day, fellow investors. Goldman just came out with a paper discussing the new postmodern cycle for investing, and I know how you usually like these things. And we also we will check the perspective that an investment bank like Goldman gives on the market. So I hope you really enjoy this letter. So we are switching from the modern cycle with lower rates to the postmodern cycle. So where inflation is a bigger risk than deflation. So we are also likely to see greater regionalization that's now the trend and an investment bank is always following the trend then they expect lower returns as higher interest rates hit the cycle and investors should focus on adapters enablers and innovators that help to boost efficiency by reducing energy and labor costs higher margin businesses are always better and avoid those that have huge spending on capex of course but let's dig into the secular shifts so the traditional cycle this is very interesting to watch so generally short cycles volatile booms and busts periods of high and low inflation and interest rates so Investors typically require a high dividend yield to compensate for the risks in equity markets. The modern cycles, stocks only go up lower and lower interest rates and a new era of globalization drove profit shares of GDP to record highs. So central banks pushed everything higher and now with inflation, it's likely to be driven by a different set of macro conditions and priorities, different styles of investment and opportunities. So we have been living with very stable times compared to the past. Now we'll see whether this will change. And then Goldman says, of course, that growth and value are the place to focus on when it comes to investing next. More on value and they are now living growth. So First, they were great about growth, especially when Tesla needed a sponsor to issue new shares. Now they switch to value. So that's also investment bank. They usually tend to switch to something after it has happened. And then, of course, the cycle is likely to be more inflationary. Oh, who knows? But it looks like now, yes. And then you can just pause here and read for the details. I want to really explain what happened in the past so lower and lower interest rates and of course this is home prices but that leads to higher and higher asset prices that's a given and when it reverts it might get uglier and i completely agree with goldman it's highly unlikely that what happened over the last 40 years will happen in the next 40 years then the next shift is about globalization to regionalization and i must say well not that fast it's now hot and trendy to talk about onshoring etc etc two years ago it was hot and trendy about uh, sustainability blah 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 now it's this but again hot and trendy it's just following trends let's look at reality of course globalization it's getting more pessimistic that being global is uh, better but of course you all enjoy your iphone made in china and the reality is that even with what's been going on, China exports to US jump. So, so much about uh, regularization and uh, press reports. Always look at the data, not at the media. But okay, it is what it is. Further, they are telling us how to invest in this new environment. And of course, real assets do better, value and value versus growth, international equities and international bonds. And if you look at periods of stagflation, real assets, value and growth, international equities do better than others. Of course, there is then inflation. Commodity prices were really subdued over time. So this is now spiking, but maybe just returning to the normal as the high investments due to cheap money allowed for higher production, expensive money, of course, commodities go higher, wages have to be increased, which might shift some things for a lot of companies and labor cost is likely to underperform so if you have a company that has high labor costs that's likely to underperform but then again it depends on businesses when it comes to investing and of course if you can find innovators or disruptors that is always great but focus on businesses analyze bottom up and then see how 
the trends of or what is really going on affects them. And then of course now that growth has crashed 75% or much more than other, now Goldman is switching to value. And then of course from growth to margin scarcity, so prefer high stable margin, stable growers, and so they are now going for value in place of growth. Maybe it's too late, you never know, but it's always nice to see what they are promoting. And then of course as inflation picks up margins, profit margins should come down. So that is something that will likely hit companies of course. And we have discussed if that happens with a recession, with a slowdown, with a higher valuation, the S&P 500 could easily fall half or 40-50% as we discussed in this video. And then Goldman says that investors should focus on companies in respective of sector or region that can secure margins and generate good compound returns in an environment of lower index returns. So now they are telling you to switch to something else. Sustainable dividend growth will become more valued as investors increasingly focus on compounded returns over time. Now strong balance sheet, so always the same story. Now that it gets a little bit shaky, people are running towards the strategy of value investing. Okay, it's okay, but I don't like the running from off. It's always about value investing, no matter what others do. If you chase these trends like Goldman, you can get in a very, very ugly place. So I hope you enjoyed this. Just a perspective from investment banks. Of course, what they say always looks smart, but you have to see on price. And the more they talk about going away from growth, the more I'm getting interested, for example, because growth is an essential part of value. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.